Hello, and welcome to my review of the season finale of Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3. And wow, what a finale it was. I absolutely loved everything about it. The animation was stellar. This season has had pretty good animation, but there have been definite bumps. And I feel that last week we did see a little bit more bumps, so the episode was so good that um, I didn't really want to harp on them. In this episode, I felt that the animation was just on par and it was absolutely beautiful so i love the animation here it was fantastic my only critique of this episode is the use of new moon during the mid climax and i'll talk about that in a second because uh, i just hate that song so what did i like about this episode well essentially everything i loved how involved sailor saturn was in the final battle now in the sailor moon s anime essentially what happens is uh, the inners form the Sailor Box, then Sailor Moon gives the Purity Chalice, or the Grail, to Mistress Nine, who then summons Pharaoh 90, the box gets broken, Pluto's already dead, so she's she's gone, and then, um, you know, uh, Hotaru defeats Mistress Nine, Saturn comes, Saturn then sacrifices herself, and she goes into Pharaoh 90, Sailor Moon essentially wills herself to be Super Sailor Moon. And I have to admit, and I could be ranting here, I feel that the way that she willed herself to be Super Sailor Moon in the S anime is very similar to how she becomes Super Sailor Moon in Crystal in the sense of gaining powers from the inner Sailor Soldiers. The only problem uh, with the S anime was she didn't have the cup to do it. But essentially, uh, you know, she did it almost in the same way. So, you know, she wills herself into Super Sailor Moon, and she dives into Pharaoh 90 and chases Sailor Saturn, and then they probably defeat Saturn together with a combination of Death and Reborn Revolution and uh, Rainbow Moon Heartache, and then that's how it ends. So here what's really awesome is we actually get to see Saturn in action, and I love seeing all the Sailor Soldiers in shock of what's happening with Saturn, which was really, really fantastic. You know, just the screams of seeing their fellow comrade in danger was, was beautiful. And it's it's weird to say a scream is beautiful, but Saturn said the you know the agony of destruction is beautiful as well. So uh, what Hotaru slash Saturn finds beautiful, kind of odd. But what I really, really love about the fact that you know they all dreaded Saturn coming, but you know at the same time they're like she's one of us. We are all the same Sailor Guardians. We're all meant to protect the princess, protect this planet, and we don't want to lose her. Even if her original mission is destruction, we we don't want her to die because she's one of us. And I, I thought that was fantastic. So Chibi Moon screams Sailor Moon and it, and it um, awakens Usagi from inside Pharaoh 90. Now, I was kind of confused with a little bit of this. Uh, share your thoughts in the comments below. But the way I had interpreted this is when Sailor Moon dives into Pharaoh 90, uh, she obviously doesn't have the time right away to unleash her powers. But what I feel happens is after Chibi Moon says Sailor Moon, she unleashes the power of the Grail and the power of the Silver Crystal within Pharaoh 90, and that essentially allows Saturn to not have to destroy the planet because uh, he's not a threat. I guess when Saturn, you know, was lifting him out of the ground, he was still there and he was still pretty powerful. But when Sailor Moon unleashed the power of the Grail, she purified the planet so that way it wasn't, uh, you know, corrupted by Pharaoh 90's power, and then uh, Saturn can essentially get him back to the Tau system where she can then defeat him. And I, I think it, I think that's how it's done. So uh, to recap that, essentially Sailor Moon purifies the Earth from inside Pharaoh 90 and then Saturn can now just destroy Pharaoh 90 by sacrificing herself. And she sacrifices herself um, without actually saying any attack. We don't even see like the destruction. But Pluto uses Dark Dome Clothes, which was the first time that appeared uh, in any of a uh, form of animation obviously it appeared in the manga but it was really cool to see dark dome clothes i thought it, the visuals were really were really interesting i kind of thought a fun comedic gag would have been to have the door like kind of explode a little bit at the end after she cast uh, dark dome clothes but that would have taken us out of the battle but back to a point that i made originally new moon i don't like as an opening i don't like it at all pretty much. I like the Clover Z's cover of it. I think that's probably the better of the two and also, or the three covers of it. But also one thing I want to note is uh, the opening was pretty cool here where they threw Sailor Saturn on the the pillars with the other Sailor Soldiers. So I did like that too. But uh, when that played, I was like, oh, why? Like, I understand it. It's it's great for nostalgia for 90s anime fans, you know, because, you know, when they played Moonlight Legend in Sailor, with Sailor Moon's Battle, 
uh, against Queen Barrel in the classic anime, you know, that that's essentially like a huge nod right there to like the opening song playing in an essential pivotal moment. But I have to say, I feel here it didn't work because the song isn't that powerful in my opinion. It's it's good. Like, don't get me wrong, it is a good song. It's just not a song that I like. It's a song that I really just don't want to have to listen to during a very important climactic battle. So anyway, uh, Saturn, uh, the music that playing during Saturn's Sacrifice was was really great, might I add. This is when the Crystal soundtrack really shined. You know, last week I had a problem with the soundtrack because they kept uh, replaying so many old scores, but I felt that here it was very evenly done, which I liked. So... Uh, following Saturn's sacrifice, what happens? Uh, Usagi transforms into Neo Queen Serenity, and there's a lot of complaints online about Neo Queen Serenity being blonde, and there's a chance it's an animation error. But we have to remember that there is a changing timeline happening all the time since Chibiusa's presence was not there during the first Neo Queen Serenity's uh, reign. So maybe somehow having Chibiusa there and Usagi's interaction with the Outers and the power of the Grail, and maybe not wanting to have her hair go white is allowing her to keep it blonde. I mean, that's my explanation for it to be blonde, but overall, I like I like that it's blonde. I feel like it's, again, another nice homage to the 90s anime, and there's also a very, very big 90s homage uh, at the end of this episode, which I'll talk about. But uh, her hair is blonde, and I like it blonde. And what happens is she makes the moon stick very big, and it heals essentially the whole earth but we only see it really heal uh the juban area so uh, she heals it and then we hear the cry of a baby so what's interesting here is sailor pluto sealed off the portal to the to the um the tau seike or the, the tau solar system and uh before i actually even get into what happened uh with Sa sailor saturn i have to say i really really wish we got to know a little bit more about pharaoh Nighty and mistress knight we learn that Mistress Nine was Pharaoh Nighty's partner in the past life, but how did the Tau system die? I mean, I'm assuming that Pharaoh Nighty's massive essence destroyed it, but was Pharaoh Nighty always a massive essence? Was he... he's kind of um, Sauron-ish, and, and I've never even really seen Lord of the Rings and know much about it. I don't know anything about Lord of the Rings, but to me, he's giving off like a Sauron-type vibe, and I want to say there had to have been a point where he had a body. And there had to be a point where he ruled the Tau system with Mistress Nine at his side. So I really wish that the anime would have dived into that. This is when Crystal could have, you know, split from the manga but give a better backstory. And it could have made Crystal, you know, you know, maybe even 16 episodes instead of 13 episodes. But to just give the villains a little bit more of a backstory. Because Pharaoh 90, unfortunately, is pretty one-sided. But that's also because he's literally drama one-sided. So I, I was really curious to see what happened with him. And, you know, Saturn killed him. And I also really love the way he died because he was once, you know, this purple mass, which is a symbol of royalty. And then he's fading and fading into gray and so essentially into nothing. So I like that his royal status was being uh, pulled off of him, thanks to Sailor Saturn, whose color is also purple. So her royalty is destroying his royalty. And speaking of royalty, I'll be talking about the, Dis uh, the Disney princesses of the princesses of the moon and the outer solar system and the inner solar system very soon in a top five video of, a, of what I want to see in the dream arc, which I have planned to record very soon. So uh, Pharaoh 90 is defeated and we see a baby and it, the baby is Sailor Saturn. So what I was saying earlier was it baffles me in a good way that the Sailor Soldier's power is so strong, particularly Sailor Saturn, that her soul is able to get through a locked gate that is supposed to be sealed off forever and then re be reborn on Earth where she belongs. So the outer soldiers, uh, you know, they, they decide to take Saturn and raise her as their own daughter, which I thought was uh, beautiful. We knew this would happen, but I just really love the fact that the outers want to be parents. And I, I really like that. It just really shows the connection between Haruka and Michiru. And even Setsuno, like they want to, you know, be this this example of, of, a, of maternal and um, in some cases paternal in, in Haruka's sense. Uh, they want to show that they have these great instincts, and I think it'll be a beautiful uh, seeing Hotaru being raised by them at some point in the dream arc. So I really love the fact that uh, they want to raise Hotaru. And speaking of uh, the inners and outers, of course, what happened here, and they haven't been officially called super, but I will be talking about them being super in my dream video, is uh, when Sailor Moon emerges from Pharaoh 90, they become super sailor soldiers, and I love the super sailor soldier costume over any of the costumes. It kind of removes a little bit of the uniqueness, but I just think it looks the best. I love the white stripe, I love the star choker, and I actually think it's interesting how in Crystal, the star choker has an individual color on it, which I really like as well. 
So, you know, and I also love the long ribbons. I think the long ribbons are a, a very uh, pivotal quota of the Super Sailor Soldiers, and I, I like seeing them there. Uh, so anyway, back to what I was saying, the Outers want to raise Saturn. They want to be these, they want to be good parents. They want to be good people, essentially kind of retire from the life of a soldier. You know, they don't want to fight anymore. And they go off to raise Hotaru. And uh, Chibi Moon doesn't want them to leave. And I love Neptune's goodbye to, Pluto, uh, to Chibi Moon. I also love uh, Pluto's goodbye to Chibi Moon, just showing that they're friends, they're allies, and they don't want to be separated. So I really, I really did like that. Chibi Moon getting Neptune's mare was really cool. I think it'd be really cool if Chibi Moon and the Dream Arc could do a, a Pesuedo uh, submarine reflection. It obviously won't happen, but I thought that would be pretty cool. Uh, so the Outers leave and the Inners are like, well, we'll see them again someday. Uranus's comment were like, we'll go somewhere far or somewhere close. So that was, really? How about you just say we're going to go down the street and we'll come back when there's another problem, which they'll be back in, I think, uh, four or five episodes. I believe they come in during the Venus episode of the Dream Arc. So the outers are gone, and that was 16 minutes of the episode. So I've been talking for 11 minutes, and we're at the 16-minute mark. So what could be happening at the end of the episode? So I said there was a little bit of nostalgia towards the end of the episode, and it's the part where Usagi grabs onto Minako, Rei, um, Makoto, and Ami. And that's almost exactly like the um, the first episode of Silver Stars, where they realize they're in high school, and they're happy that they're in high school. And um, I think it's so funny for a character who saved the world three times like, high school is her biggest problem at the moment. Like, she has saved the world. I mean, education is important. Don't get me wrong. I'm in a graduate program right now. And so seriously, do not get me wrong about, uh, about dissing education. But when a character has saved the world so many times, and her biggest problem at the moment is education, it's like, um, something weird there. <laughs> it's just, it's, 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 it's funny to me. But this is also what makes Usagi a magical girl. It makes her a human being. Which, are like, all of them have moments here where they are talking about how you know, they're going to be in high school, they're going to join clubs, Minako and Usagi are going to be uh, failing buddies, which is not something I advise for anyone to want to have a friend for, just to be a failure, a failure because uh, no, no bueno, no, not good. Uh, Ray's little bit with um, Usagi and like that, like that jokey style where she pops up on Usagi's, uh, I believe it was on her left, I really like that. That was a very much a, a throwback to the 90s enemy. So like that whole, whole scene with, uh, with them essentially talking about going to Juban High, was 90s throwback but development of all the inner characters which was fantastic and i think really really important to their growth because it's showing us that again they want to they want to they want to study they want to be a doctor uh, amy wants to be a doctor or jupiter wants to you know learn to cook uh, mars wants to join the archery club poor shout out to mars snake fire might i add or not snake fire uh mars flame sniper so I really, really like that. And then the very, very, very end of the episode, they're talking about a solar eclipse. And who comes during the solar eclipse? The dead moon. And the dead moon wasn't in the end of the episode. Uh, Chibiusa and Usagi put uh, visors. Also, Mamoru puts a visor to his eye as well. And you hear the sound of a bell. And Pegasus in the original anime was summoned by Chibiusa going twinkle bell or twinkle yell. And I, I remember the dove attack was crystal twinkle bell, which is, which is a mouthful. So Chibiusa... Uh, and Usagi, they turn, but there's nothing there. It goes to black. It's kind of ambiguous, but it's most likely going to happen that we're going to be getting Dream, and I'll be doing a whole video on Dream, like I said, very, very soon. So overall, animation to this episode was stunning. I love the ending. I love how it was ambiguous. I love how it gave all of our characters development. The outers got development. The inners got development. Uh, the battle was fantastic. Saturn is alive, which is great. I'm really looking forward to it. It was a little 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 lackluster in the sense that it just went so fast but i i still loved it to me this episode i'll give a four to four and a half out of five stars uh just because i can't give it a full five for the use of new moon because i really didn't like new moon but anyway i love this episode i've talked about it for over 14 minutes which is uh if i talked for 10 more minutes i'd be talking the length of the whole episode which is just weird so I'll be doing a top five things I want to see in the dream arc very soon. So share your thoughts about this episode in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning into my review. I thought it was fantastic. I really, really did. I covered the entire season anime, uh, the season of this anime, which is also awesome. I did that for the last one, but I had to delete all my stuff because of the copyright strike. But now that that's over, my channel's back to normal. I'm going to use uh, images and I'll put like stuff on the side when I do reactions to the dream arc trailer and stuff. I'm going to get the channel back as best as I can. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm glad that we got to do this discussion of Sailor Moon, and we'll talk real soon. Bye.